Reefers! Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. I'm Anya and today we're in store at Gallery Aquatica where I'm going to share with you my ultimate secrets to taking the most beautiful macro shots of your corals with absolutely no need for post-processing and it's so simple, it's as easy as the click of a button. So one of the initial challenges that reefers will have when they approach taking photos of their corals in their tank is due to the fact that most of our modern day lighting spectrum is heavily based on the blue side. Now this blue light is actually very important for a lot of our corals, they will benefit from that and it is because those wavelengths they are found quite deep down in the ocean and so we're replicating the same wavelength that the coral is getting naturally in their place of origin in our aquarium. Not only that, but the coral just fluoresces and looks so vibrant and amazing. It's no wonder that reefers are leaning their light spectrum over to the blue side. So in order to understand how to correct for this, I'll just touch briefly about what light is. So white light is made up of a whole range of different wavelengths and each wavelength corresponds to a certain colour. Now these wavelengths of light are measured in nanometers where the blue and violet end of the spectrum starts around 380 to 400 nanometers and it travels, it looks much like a rainbow you'll see, that goes all the way up to red at about 700. So the blue light penetrates the deepest spots in the ocean and that is why we tend to have corals that are found deeper down and we run the blue lights. So plenty of colour correction filters have been made available on the recent aquarium market and so you tend to find them to be an orange or a yellow colour which is capable of filtering out that blue. Now, it could be as easy as using a piece of cellophane or a gel filter such as these that you cut to fit or even a piece of amber acrylic. I've seen some people even just use their polarized sunglasses, but today I'm going to introduce you to a product that has literally revolutionized the way that I take photos. And Sea Dreams Aquarium has actually invented a specific lens that is made exactly for my Olympus TG camera that just easily affixes onto the lens and it's actually made of optical glass so the quality um, is very good and you don't get any kind of inconsistencies there once you clean it. <laughs> so it's actually designed to filter out 450 nanometer wavelength so it's suddenly completely eliminated the need for white balancing, post editing, any apps, any kind of Photoshop, no need for saturation. Simply all you need to do is install it and take your photo. But there are a handful of little tips and tricks that I can provide because I've had lots of practice using this one. So Come with me and I'll show you some of those. So the product in question that has revolutionized my photography is called the Eye of Horus. And these lenses have been invented also for some smartphones, but specifically to fit the Olympus TG camera series. So I'll show you what you get when you purchase the product. You get this beautiful little case, some velvet, and this is where the magic happens but you will actually need a little adapter which is like a ring that allows this lens to screw on in one piece to your camera before you get started so first things first it's really important to turn off your flow not just the flow from your wave makers but I also like to turn off the flow from the return as well. So once the flow is off, you need to put the camera into the correct setting. 
and there's a whole range of settings available on this camera including one that is specifically for underwater photography but I don't use that promise you've got to trust me on this one the best setting to be on is the microscope which is macro and I can't explain why what I can tell you is it works so before you're ready to put your camera under the water, be sure to check all four buttons are in the lock position. This prevents flooding and also prevents you from needing to buy a whole new camera. <laughs> so installing the filter is a little tricky. You have to put it under the water to get all the air bubbles out. And you line up this white dot on the ring with the white dot on your camera underwater. So this is about as hard as it gets. I sway it from side to side, line up the whites, and there's a little locking button here that you push. And from here on in, you can see there's no bubbles between the lens and the original camera lens which will make sure that your photo is nice and clear. Sometimes I like to wipe it down because if the temperature of the water is very cold, you can get a little bit of condensation there, but that doesn't usually happen. It's just a really hot day today. So the next thing to think about is where is the source of your lighting? If you have the light behind your camera, it can be very easy to then create shade onto your coral with the camera itself and if you have the light behind your coral it will actually create a, like a backlight so you won't be able to get the finer details of the coral subject in question. The next thing about positioning is you have to have a real good think about the coral or the model in question of your photography. So. You look at the different planes of the coral. Now, some corals such as Acropora are very difficult to find a flat plane, but what you're trying to do is find the flattest area of the coral colony and you position your camera parallel to that plane. And this creates a much better uh, focus and it makes the entire image very, very clear and you don't get those artsy looking shots where just the front of the coral is very clear and it fades back into oblivion. You actually are able to showcase the best quality of the coral or in this case, a zoanthid frag. So I'll use this orange rainbow as an example. We've got a colony here, which is quite large, and I'm just gonna use the zoom feature to really hone in and find the flattest plane possible. And with this camera, you actually just tap the little button on the top once, and a little green square comes up, which is going to show you where the focal point is. And all you need to do from here is just find the plane, focus somewhere along that plane, and take the photo. So I'll take a couple of shots without the filter and then with the filter so you can have a better example of uh, just how the magic happens. You won't believe the difference that this filter makes on providing an image that is so close to what you see in person until you've tried it yourself. My last and final tip about taking the perfect macro shot is when you push that button, hold your breath. I got this tip from art class back in the day when I used to paint a lot. and by not breathing, you actually 
have the highest chance possible of having a very steady hand. And that's why when some people come and visit me and I'm taking these photos, you won't hear me say a single word. So as someone who's responsible for up to 500 or more coral photos every week at Gallery Aquatica, I hope you can appreciate me sharing some of my secrets with you on how I like to cut corners to save time, be more efficient and get the job done. I've got plenty more coral photos to take today, so thank you again for joining me and happy reefing! That's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you've subscribed to our channel so you don't miss an episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing!